You are listening to the People Centric Podcast, where we talk through the toughest challenges that people face at work and give practical advice to fixing those challenges. Thanks for joining our movement to create workplaces that are happier, healthier, aligned, and empowered by putting people at the center of all that we do. Hey, people-centric leaders, this is Stephanie Anderson, and I've got Diana Royalty and Bethany Taff on with me today, and we are just so excited to be with you here on the podcast. Um, And so we're going to kind of tackle an interesting topic today that even as our team discussed it, we thought, wow, there's a lot of different ways to define this. There's a lot of different experiences that come with this, and so the word of the day is loyalty. And so some of you either just got warm fuzzies or you um, want to hide under your chair in this moment when we talk about loyalty and especially loyalty in the workplace. And what does that mean. So this is our topic um, for today, but really quick, want to give um, Diana and Bethany a chance to say hello before we dive in here. So Diana, Bethany, when we think about loyalty in the workplace, like where does your head go immediately? I immediately go to a weird, dark place. I do not love the word loyalty in the workplace because I just don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it, but I well, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that word in most contexts. Cause I think it makes you feel like you have to stick to something and uh, let's just face it. I'm a quitter. And I think sometimes you would so quit. <laughs> yeah. It is interesting because I feel like we, you just hear lots of employers talk about how people just aren't loyal anymore. They just don't have great work ethic or all of these things. And, and I get it. Yeah. I think that people are picky and they're able to choose where they want to be and jump from job to job and try different things out. And um, so I understand the sentiment of it. And also I think that there is right this line of like, okay, but what is, when should somebody be loyal or not loyal? And what does that really mean? And, you know, a commitment to an employer um, might look different than a commitment and like your other relationships. And so that's, I think why we're talking about this. Yeah, definitely. And I think it, it, this word akin, is a kind of akin to me when people talk about workplaces being like family. And that's always one for me where I kind of go like, Oh, yucky. Um, you know, work is different than family. And for me, that's, those are two very distinct things. And while you can have a culture of care on your team and we're going to help each other a lot, like your work is not your family. Um, and in the same way, like, so loyalty, maybe I think is just kind of maybe the new word that we're hearing out there a lot. Um, and it just feels like it's been floating around us quite a bit lately as we talk with leaders across the country and employees across the country, this word loyalty keeps coming up and we keep hearing everyone define it differently. And so, um, thought I would kick us off a little bit with just some personal stories from my life and the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Um, but of just kind of like how I've experienced loyalty being defined in my career. Um, so on maybe like a positive side of the spectrum, I had a boss once who defined loyalty really as like, you show up and you give your best every day. And that shows your commitment to the team. And this person even went so far as to say openly in front of members on the team, like, I believe that people are brought to our organization in some way, sometimes to grow through us, that some of the really talented people on our team will leave. They'll get great opportunities. We know we, we know who we are and we know what we do. And we know that there's a cap for some of you for growth here. And so it was so open to even say like, Hey, like loyalty means you're going to give us your best every moment that you're here. And someday we're going to see you fly off into the sunset to your next great opportunity. And we're going to be so glad that we got you for this season. 
in contrast to that, I had another workplace that I was in um, where our leader defined loyalty as you're either for us as you're, or you're against us mentality. And uh, that was as challenging as it sounded. So this was um, a leader that you really couldn't disagree with. I mean, even on minor things, um, they would take a lot of offense if you said anything that was counter to what they had just said, especially in a public uh, meeting or space or in front of the team. Um, I remember having meetings with this person sometimes and would express something that I had felt or experienced and they would tell me, no, that's, that wasn't it. And then I would try to say, well, but that's what happened. And they'd be like, no, you're either with us or you're against us on this. And we're either going to move forward in the same direction, or you're going to get off the bus. Needless to say, I did not work there that long. Um, so, um, just knowing there's such a, a spectrum to this and defining loyalty. So like, how, how are we seeing people define loyalty in the workplace and what are the pros and cons of that? Cause I think in both of those stories, there's probably like pros and cons to either of those approach. I didn't share those to say one's good and one's bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this a lot of times ties to like core values and that kind of stuff. And when people make core values, they don't use words like disingenuous. Let's be disingenuous, right? They're always good words. Loyalty is a good word. There's just like a lot of baggage tied to it. And so I sort of feel like family is that same concept. It's a good word. You know, we're using good words. We have good intent around them, but then how they're actually applied in the real world varies. And it could vary from person to person, from leader to leader, from team to team. And so I think, you know, defining what that means for you as your team is really important. So if you do have, I do want to make the statement, if you have loyalty as one of your core values, or it is something that you are talking about in your organization, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> so it's I think really it's good, <laughs> right? It's, you just need to define it. I think the good stuff about loyalty is, um, you know, you get a team that's long-term and really trusted and, and you get to do a lot of things and maybe have autonomy to do those things. And maybe, um, just feel like you're part of something bigger. You know? And so I think that sort of positive spin on loyalty is not a bad thing, right? Though that's probably where the intent comes from. Yeah. And I'll agree with that of like, yeah, loyalty in its perfect sense is an ideal, right? Like it'd be beautiful that we all like have this like collective purpose and we're all working together and we're in it together. And it's kind of like that village effect and it's so great, but it goes wrong so often. So let's talk about like, what have we, what do we see sometimes in organization where there's a misalignment on what loyalty means, maybe especially between different members of the team, or I think we see it a lot between like the leader and an employee, like what is a misalignment on the definition of loyalty look like on a team? Yeah, we were talking about this before we hopped on, but I think there's lots of times where you see it and it's, again, it's birthed out of something really good and, and really like admirable, maybe at first of like somebody, you know, employees who feel really connected to that leader, they really trust them, or they really just value, you know, value the mission and vision of the organization, and they, and they want to support it at all costs, and so they're going to do anything that they can to be there, and be present, and to be helpful, and to put forth, like, effort to make this thing happen, and that sounds really great, except for whenever it goes really bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then people don't have freedom to make decisions that they need to make, whether, you know, for their personal lives um, or to disagree or challenge maybe something that's happening internally or um, or whatever. Like, it just feels like I think whenever loyalty gets a little bit twisted is whenever people lose. And Diana said this earlier, like lose autonomy. Um, and I think that that's really, really dangerous whenever um, you're considering like loyalty, um, being good in the workplace or not. And so that's one thing that, that I think we've seen. Yeah. And I think it gets a little dangerous when we start 
describing people as not loyal for whatever reason, right? Like, oh, that person is disloyal because they left the company or they disagreed with the boss or they, I don't know, there's a ton of examples. But when we start saying like, oh, that person's not loyal, I feel like this part starts to get icky. I, I don't like to definitively call someone something like disloyal without understanding, fully understanding the person's intent. Because I doubt very much that anytime a person left a company, they were like, well, I just, I'm intending to be disloyal, right? They're, that's just not what's happening. What's happening is they have a life, they have responsibilities, they have, they need more money, they need more flexibility, they need something you're not providing, and they're leaving the organization or they're moving, like whatever it is to describe someone as disloyal for some instance. I think is where the value gets lost. And I think that's where we start twisting that value. And so, yeah. When gonna... there's just fear, I feel like I've seen a couple, I've seen some examples of that where there's like people who would maybe describe their fear as loyalty, if that makes sense. And so it's like, oh no, no, those are two different things. <laughs> You're that's loyalty is not, no, you shouldn't be fearful um, with certain decisions that you should or need to make. Um, and if you are, then like that's really that's not the same thing. Those are not synonymous with each other. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, when we were teeing up for this call, Diana, you talked about like, okay, if you have to give up your strengths, your purpose, or your autonomy, then like, that's not loyalty, you know? So can we, cause we've been talking about autonomy a little bit, but even the strengths and the purpose, Bethany, when you were just talking, like sometimes we'll hear employees express like not wanting to disappoint their boss or leader, which I think all of us feel that like everyone wants to do a great job at what they do. Like every human being wants to do that and feel like they're doing a great job. But sometimes we'll hear that to like an extreme viewpoint where like someone is like to that point of fear or where it's like, maybe it feels like almost they've lost sense of their purpose at work because I just have to work to like serve this other person. Or sometimes we'll hear employees talk about like, well, I'm really here so that Diana can be successful in her job and her role. And Diana made a bad face. Um, when I said that, if you're watching us on YouTube, but like, they'll talk about that. And, and again, it's like, I think the intention behind that is, is so pure and kind that we want, we love each other and we want to support each other. And we do build personal relationships at work where we want to see the people around us su succeed, but like what, yeah. How, how does that happen? Maybe how do we get there? And lose some of our like purpose and autonomy in those relationship. And then it turns into this weirdly thing that like, I have to keep doing that to remain loyal to you. Yeah. I think that's where, I think that's where you've built a culture of yucky loyalty, right? I'm just going to call it that. Um, and I think it's because it's, it happens over time and it's, it's a, it's a narrative paradigm that we build in our heads, right? We were talking about that earlier. It's this story that's created that I'm disloyal if I X, Y, or Z. I'm not loyal if I do one, two, or three things. I can't do the things that I really want to do because if I do those things, I'm considered not loyal. And I think, I think it's easy to do, it's easy to say those things in the moment. Like, ooh, if you do this, then they're going to look at you as not loyal. But I think what we have to do as human beings is take a step back from that and say, if that is not my intent and my intent is to be loyal, how can you ascribe that to me? And if the, if I am trying to be loyal, but also be loyal to myself and my beliefs and my passion and my strengths, then what loyalty is the most important loyalty, right? Yeah. Where does that come from? Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, like it's easy sometimes in these examples when we're sharing some of these stories of like how you get to the yucky loyalty to be like, oh, well, it's all the leader, 
Right. And sometimes it is. Um, but I will say it's it's a little more rare for us to encounter leaders who walk around like evil dictators and define loyalty expressly this way and say, you are all here to serve me and to ensure my success and that I hit my goals every year and that I this business is what I want it to be. But I think it, it does. It comes from maybe like a good place of like, oh, I want to do a good job and I don't want to disappoint. And sometimes I think there is like that moment where maybe we've accidentally defined loyalty the wrong way as an employee like that. That boss has never said that to us. So it's doing a little like self-reflection. Like, so why do I feel that way? And it could very well be that is a part of the culture that has gotten kind of yucky and toxic, right? Of like, okay, yeah, maybe the boss never says that. But when anyone leaves the company for any reason, we talk about them really, really disparagingly. Or um, when someone makes a mistake, then we they get talked about by everyone, and and maybe you know some loyalty adjacent words get thrown out. So I think it's it's careful here, you know, as a leader or as an employee to like say like, okay why do I feel that way? And let's, let's self-reflect on this. Is it something that maybe I need to redefine loyalty for myself and not hold myself to this unrealistic and unreasonable standard? Or are there things going on in our culture and the language that we use and how we talk about other people, how we talk about each other, even, even how we talk about other companies and our competitors. And can we confront that narrative paradigm and say, let's be really clear as a company of like what we mean when we say that we're going to be supportive of one another and, and how we could define loyalty in a more healthy way. Yeah, I think like one of our, and we've talked about this before, one of our values is truth. And um, and we talk about communication a lot and all those things. And I think that that's really important in a value because then it opens the door for us to be able to like have honest conversations with each other. And I think that like, yeah, I think sometimes that it's like we were talking about if you, do, if you have loyalty as a value, great have it but make sure it's defined what does that mean and I would argue that part of it should mean that like we are loyal to each other because we want to we want to tell the truth to each other and like that's what that really means um and we want to be honest with each other we want to make each other better not we want to now we want to like you know misuse and misunderstand our relationships um and yeah there's just a lot of there's just a lot of weight in that so. Yeah. And like, you should be able to disagree at work. Right. And we talked about this a little bit of like you, it's impossible not to disagree, you know, like it's impossible for that to be a healthy relationship. You know, I always think of like, oh, the high school relationships or maybe college sweethearts were like, we never fight. And anytime I hear someone say that I'm like, number one, that can't be true. And number two, if it is true, then there's even bigger issues than you guys not fighting. <laughs> and so um, kind of a silly example, but of like, you, you should be able to disagree in the workplace, but you have to be able to do it respectfully. And I think that's the line and where a lot of companies and maybe teams haven't figured out how to do, do that. And how do we disagree respectfully? Yeah. And I'll add, like, I, I've been at people centric almost 10 years. And I think that Don and I are loyal to one another. I'm loyal to the company. I, it's a healthy loyalty. I'm going to put it as a good, we're going to phrase that as a good thing right now. Um, but the thing is, if, if every time I disagreed with Don, he automatically was like, oh, Diana's not loyal. We would have a totally different relationship because that is not my intent. My intent is to ensure that I'm pushing back appropriately, ensure that I am getting clarity when I don't understand, ensure that I am putting my perspective out there so that we can build the best product and services for our clients. And if every time I did that, he was like, Oh, are you really loyal to me? First of all, I would not have survived very long. And I might've gotten sick on him and just like thrown up on his shoes. Cause that is gross. Um, but if every time he did that, I would, it's just, it lessens your ability to, to stay. It lessens your ability to want to stay. It lessens your ability to use your strengths as a human and do what you do best. Yeah. I was going to say, I was like, yeah, let's just use, we could use us as an example or me yeah. or whatever. Like yeah. I feel that way too, that yes, do I want to be loyal to the organization that I'm at? 
um, yeah, of course, I want to give, you know, give everything that I, I can in that position. And I want to make sure that like, I'm helping support that organization and the cause and all of those things. And also, I think it's pretty clear for any of us on our team, at least that's like, we're going to be here until it makes sense for us not to be here anymore. You know what I mean? And I think that like, we can all respect that with each other. And I think John respects that too. And knows that like, of course, like if there's a point in time where it doesn't make sense for one of us to be here for whatever reason, because we need to do something different for our family, or we have another opportunity that we're like excited about, or has been presented to us or, you know, whatever, like we can go do that. And would we miss each other? And would we be sad? Of course. Does that mean we would like guilt trip each other out of that? I hope not. I don't think so. (laughs) You know? And I think that that, like, that's healthy. We can say, oh man, we're really going to miss you. But I don't think that's like a sign of, oh, they, they don't care. Like they're just going to leave us, you know, out yeah. to dry or whatever, you know? Yeah. So. I, I love that you were like, let's use us. Cause I kind of, I was like, I don't want to call anyone out. Let's use us. Um, and I I'll also add, I do think we have a very loyal team. I think our team is like loyal to one another. We really like each other. I think we're loyal to the mission. I think we're loyal to the company, right? I I think we have a very loyal team. And also we never talk about it. We have never once been like, we have to be loyal to each other. Like I I sort of get the sense that loyalty is sort of like culture, right? You can't work on culture by saying you're going to work on culture. You have to work on the things that affect culture. So you can't work on loyalty. You have to work on the things that affect loyalty, right? And so those things I think are things like Do your people get to work within their strengths? Do your people have autonomy? Do your people know that they're they're here for a purpose? And does that purpose align with them as human beings? So like, I don't think you can just say blanket statement, like you have to be loyal. I think you have to give people a reason to be loyal to the thing that you want them to be loyal to. And so I sort of think that's where this conversation was going. I don't know. Good. No, I think that's really good to say, like, it's when we talk about, it's kind of the same thing. Like when you talk about respect, like we sometimes just think like, oh, everybody just like automatically should owe you respect. And it's like, no, 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 that's not really, (laughs) that's not really true. Like, why should somebody respect you? And so like, why should somebody be, you know, loyal to you um, as well? And so I think, yeah, we sometimes, I think that's where you get into trouble with when people just automatically are expected to be loyal to your organization or to you as a leader, sometimes bad things happen. And so um, I think that sometimes there's like, there's, there's abuse that nobody's calling abuse. (laughs) Um, Sometimes there's unethical or just like illegal things that people decide like, oh, I guess I should do this or agree to this because like, I don't want to be disloyal or I don't want to disappoint that, that person or whatever. And I mean, that happens all the time. It sounds like, like, of course I would never do that if somebody you know, put me in that position, but it happens. I mean, every single day, whether it's really, really small things or really big things that people don't get caught on. (laughs) Um, and so I think it's just, you have to be really careful about it. Um, so I think that's a great, a great point, Diana. Yeah. And I think I use the, this is an old, I'm dating myself, but I use the example of Enron for what happened at Enron, that company, For what happened to have happened there, many, many people were complacent because they were trying to be loyal. So they had, they had given up their own autonomy. They had given up their own ability to make decisions about ethics, to stay loyal to a company. And then it collapsed and it caused millions of dollars to be lost and, you know, really painful for a lot of people. So I just, you know, I think to your point, We all want to say that that wouldn't happen to us, but it does. Those little decisions do make a difference. And if you're constantly being told that you're not loyal or not genuine or not respectful, when you make decisions outside of 
what those parameters are, then I think it does for a minute make you question your ethics and your loyalty and your respectfulness, you know? Yeah. And you hear us talk a lot about like being um, just engagement and empowerment and alignment and all of those kinds of things. And I think this is a part of that conversation too, to say, okay, yeah, everybody wants to be engaged and empowered and aligned within their organization, but don't do that under false pretense. So we would also encourage that like, if you know, when an organization does set their mission and vision and values and you don't agree with them, like don't just sit there and try to force yourself to agree with them. I think those are very clear guideposts for you to understand hey, this is where the organization is going. And if you can get on board with it and you and you do agree with it, then great. And if you don't, I think that's where it's like, you have to be able to like own that and excuse yourself. Otherwise you will become really toxic or you'll become really miserable, honestly, <laughs> in that position too. And you'll start, you'll start finding, you know, questioning and finding yourself in positions where you're like, gosh, I'm, doing this thing that I just don't agree with. And you have a choice in that too. So. Yeah, I, I agree with all of that. And, you know, Diana, you were talking earlier about loyalty, even in terms of like what our company's mission is and the purpose. And I think like, yeah, for our team, I see like how I would define loyalty for us is, you know, I guess we have each other's backs and we're supportive of one another. But that doesn't mean that we do that at the cost of like, oh, I just, I would never think that they, no one could ever say anything bad about Diana or no one could ever say anything bad about Bethany. You know what I mean? Like, I think sometimes teams take loyalty that way too, of like supporting one another that then we're, we're above reproach. No one can, no one can touch us. No one can talk to us, but the mission of the company and being loyal to that. I mean, I think that's why we're all at people centric. I mean, we're inspired by the vision that has been cast that people could be at the center of every organization that everyone deserves to feel purposeful and fulfillment in their work and what they do. Um, you know, like we're all pretty upset with the statistics that 51% of the workforce in America is disengaged. Like we just believe it should be better than that. And so I think it's, it's good to talk about that on your teams as well. Like a healthy way to define loyalty is that we're each aligning our purpose with an organization that feels close to, to our own purposes and, and what we do. And I just, I keep coming back Diana to what you said, as we were prepping for a call of like kind of a gut check moment on loyalty and is loyalty being defined in a healthy way in our organization or, or for yourself personally of like, okay, are you having to, to give up strengths, purpose, or any autonomy for yourself in this organization or you know, if you're the leader looking at this, are there people on your team who maybe you're observing have given up using their strengths, um, living in their own purpose, having autonomy? Like, do we have some codependent or fused relationships in the organization where we see someone working um, for either you or someone else in the company kind of to their own detriment? We can tell they're miserable, but here they still are. <laughs> um, or, you know, are people being forced to work in roles that don't bring them fulfillment or aren't a good use of their strength. Or we were even talking about this this morning, our team, have we pigeonholed people into roles maybe just because that is their strength, but that's not really what they want to do. So I love um, that gut check of it. Yeah. And I think if you're an employee thinking about like, gosh, I feel this, like I feel, you know, like I might even use the phrase, oh, I'm loyal to a fault, right? Like we hear people say that, that kind of a thing. And we're just sort of like, yeah, I know I'm like, I'm loyal to a fault. Um, like gut check yourself and say, you know, what am I? Cause I think there's fear behind that as like what, what I said earlier. And if that's true, if you're afraid to, to make a decision that's different, that's gonna, that you feel is disloyal or whatever, um, ask yourself where that's coming from and like, why, what am I afraid of happening here? And I think, and figuring out like, where does that come from? Like, is that a real thing? Is that something that, that I've seen happen in the organization in the past? That's that, that could very well happen. 
Or is this something that I've sort of created in my head and I'm just, and I'm just afraid of, of conflict in general. And so I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to come across as disloyal when really like that hasn't been set up in the culture at all. Um, and I think, so I think just finding that and figuring out like, what is the source of that really, um, and, and being able to move forward from there in terms of how you need to make those decisions for yourself. Yeah. I love that. Cause I think a lot of people that loyal to a fault, like the fault is that you're, you're being so loyal. It's a detriment to your own life. And that that's like a weird, that's not a healthy loyalty there. If your loyalty is so much that it's derailing your life, that's a, that's a, that's an unhealthy loyalty. Yeah. And I think it's again, like acknowledging, like we are all humans at work. Right. And like, it's okay. Like you, you should have your own purpose and your own values that, that you live by. And, you know, you should be able to work in a company that supports you having your own autonomy and using your strengths and living into your own purpose. And if it doesn't feel like you could do that, then yeah, like Bethany said of like, let's do a gut check here and let's look at the employer. Like, is there something that's going on? here that may be like, okay, it's forcing me outside of my own values and I don't want to be a part of this. Or yeah, is it something that maybe I I have some things that have happened in my life um, that make it hard for me to um, disappoint people or, or disagree or deal with conflict? And, and maybe I'm internalizing some things, um, maybe in not the most healthy way. And I would say if, if you're there, um, reach out to someone, um, talk with a therapist, I think, um, you know, we are huge proponents of mental health. um, And I think it doesn't get talked enough about in the workplace that sometimes there are those things that have happened in your life that makes it hard for you to um, remain autonomous as an employee or to deal with conflict in a healthy way. So reach out to somebody and talk through that stuff um, with them. And then also, you know, if you're seeing it in your culture, like talk with, talk with your leaders tell them what you're seeing and and why it's concerning and open up the dialogue on that. You don't have to wait for somebody at the top to wake up one day and realize that like, Oh, this got kind of yucky, like jump in and have the conversations with people or call us. We don't always always call call us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There's a, we know there's also a line between, yeah. uh, Like mental health and and getting the right support for that and, and going to therapy, like somebody said, but also, you know, if it is, if it is just your culture and you see that and you're like, I don't even know who to go talk to within my organization. Cause I'm afraid. Cause it's so ingrained into our culture. Um, give us a call, like, or shoot us an email. I know Diana shares that at the end of our, uh, at the end of our podcast. And so, um, you know, listen for that. But I think, you know, we'd be so happy to just hop on the phone with somebody and talk through like, hey, what's your next step and how can we help? And, you know, if you want to send us an email instead, because you're just like, I just don't even want to talk through it yet. That's cool. We'll, we'd love to get your email too. Um, just know that there's resources out there um, and and we would love to help if even if we're not the right people to talk through the situation, like we'd be happy to point you in the right direction. So. Yeah. And I think to that point, also, if you're a leader and you're like, my people are not loyal or I'm having trouble finding loyal people or something like that, call us so that we can help you talk through that. Because what we're going to say is like, well, what systems are put in place that are causing the disloyalty? What things are happening that make people want to leave and not be loyal? Because I think most people want that loyalty and most people want the stability. So what systems are in place that are causing some of that disloyalty in your mind. So yeah, we'd love to talk through that too. Send us an email, let us know We're we love talking about this stuff. If you couldn't tell we're we're kind of always pondering and helping people get through those things. Yes. Yeah. We'd love to talk to you guys, help you work through this with your team. So shoot us a message. Um, and we would love to hear your thoughts on this conversation. What does loyalty mean and where's the line on loyalty in the workplace? So we hope this has been, um, a helpful conversation to you guys today. As we've now said several times, reach out to us. We'd love to hear more. Or if there's another topic that, as we were discussing this, you thought, Ooh, okay. This could line up with that as well. We'd love to have a conversation. Send us your ideas too. We love to hear from you. 
on what's happening um, in your worlds and your workplaces um, and would love to hear an idea for a topic that you have. So thanks so much for listening today. Be sure to tune in the outro to know how to get a hold of us and we'll see you back here soon. Thank you for listening to the People Centered Podcast. We are so grateful for you joining us every week. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. Also, feel free to share on your social media with everyone that you know. It really does help us. If you would like to contact us, I have put our information in the show notes. Please reach out anytime. We love hearing from you. We will be back next week with a new topic. Until then, be well and need well.